In this video, we're going to do an introduction to very basic use of animation in Photoshop. You're going to create a new document, 3 inches by 3 inches by uh, 300 resolution. Over here in the Layers palette, we're going to create a new empty layer. And you're going to use the Marquee tool to create a square. I'm going to press and drag, and then fill it with black. Don't forget to deselect. Now, if I just wanted to have this uh, object go backwards and forwards, then I could leave it as a regular layer. But instead, I actually want it to be a smart object. And you'll see that that's part of the process that we're going to do. Next, bring up the Timeline palette, which is under Window, Timeline, and down here we have two options, either create a video timeline, which is what we're doing, or a frame animation, which is great for stop motion. Click on that and you'll see in any file whatever is in your layers palette is going to be here on the timeline. And if I were to open that, you'll see I've got position, opacity, and style. But since I want to do transformative elements to it, I need to make this a smart object. So I'm going to go up here, Layer, Smart Objects, Convert to Smart Object. And now when I open it, you'll see that it's actually Transform. Um, here's our playback. This little guy here is our present moment. And this little kind of green line right there that actually indicates whether or not it's been cached. At the point that it is solid, that means your animation is going to play back smoothly when you look at it. So I'm going to bring it back to the first point, and we're going to just click the transform. That's going to set what we call a keyframe, which means that at that point, that's where the square is going to be. Now, I'm going to be doing these at even intervals, which means the movement will be have a very smooth quality to it. I've moved to the 1.0, and um, I'm going to do Command-T, and we're going to rotate this guy 90 degrees, and hit Enter. You'll notice that automatically a keyframe was placed there. If I were to drag this back, there's my action. Okay, now I go to the next point, and I am going to Command-T again, and I'm reducing the size by about 50%. And if you look up on the Options palette there, you'll see you could actually plug in those numbers into the height and width, or just keep an eye on them. And when I hit Return again, another keyframe is placed. I now go to 3, and now this one I actually wouldn't have to do as a smart transform, but I am going to. I'm going to drag it down to this bottom corner and hit return. Another keyframe is placed, and go to 4, and I'm going to kind of squish this. A very um, uh, kind of typical animation that people do is they do the same thing with a ball and they'll squish it like to make the ball bounce. Um, I'm making this shorter and wider. Hit return and that enters it. Now if I was, uh, you can see that I didn't totally transform it when I rotated it wasn't completely flat which is why there's a little awkwardness there but this is just an example so I don't have to be perfect. Go to my last point, and I am going to press it down and have it extend the whole way. And I'm going to actually rotate. Well, oh, we'll see if I can rotate that a little bit just to clean it up some. Okay, and hit enter. Uh, and now if I hit the play button, there is the set of movements. And so at each point, it does the action that we were doing. Alrighty, you can also use the space bar to stop it. So that's the basic use of smart objects in Transform.